Hi guys and welcome to part 6 of ASP.NET MVC Core tutorial. On the last part we learned how to configure the ASP.NET MVC Core application. And before we continue further, let us first learn what MVC itself is. Well, MVC itself stands for Model View Controller and it is a design pattern. The main benefit of using MVC is that the logic of the application is well separated. So we have the models, the views and the controllers separated from each other. Since the logic is well separated, it means that the application is testable and maintainable. But what is a model? A model will contain the data that the user will work with. For example, in our case, since we will work with drinks, we will have a drink model. And later on, when we add authentication to our application, we will have a user model as well. In other words, a model is referred to as model logic. The models will be represented as classes in our solution, so the classes that we are going to create will represent the models that we are going to work with. A model always interacts with a controller, and a controller is used to connect the model with a view. So a controller will provide the logic to our data and the result is shown to a view. For example, in our application we will have two types of drinks. If we want to see only the alcoholic drinks, then we will have to execute some logic on the whole drinks and from there we get only the alcoholic ones. And all this logic will be done by a controller. So until now we have only used the controller to interact with the data using a drink model and to show the data to the user we will have to use a view. As we have already mentioned, a view is used to display the data to the user. The controllers are generally triggered from the views and the views are typically created from the model data. But how do model, view and controller actually interact with each other? Let's suppose we have a controller and on this controller we make a request to get only some part of the drinks. The first thing that the controller will do is that it will go and get the data model for the request. And after we have done the request, the controller by using the drinks model will get our data. And after that it has the data, it will want to update the view so for that it will send all the data to the view. Now that our view has the data, it needs to connect to a data model in order to display them. So for that we connect now our view to our model. And this is how the flow will look like. Thank you for watching and see you on the next part.